heels of President Obama's recent clemency of low-level drug offenders comes the obvious dilemma placed upon jailed men without criminal records doing jail time for being behind in child support. Right in front of us all is the obvious state of confusion for what is right and what is wrong. Jailing parents, just another shining example why government should not be involved in family business. Absent the need of single parent to obtain a child assistance is the huge chasm of bad legislation. Um, this is an unusual story, one that's going to tug at your heartstrings. It's a father who's jailed, and his name is on my left is Barney Guzzo, the incarceration victim and father, and to his left, Gary Jacobs, family law reformer. Well, this is a nightmare case, I know, and rather than go through the whole entire thing, it's too difficult to go through the whole thing. Let's give it a quick highlight film, if you will, for about a minute or two. You were married and how many kids, and just quickly. I was uh, married and uh, we had two children. Um, they are how old now? Uh, right now they're 14 and 8. And when did this start? The uh, divorce started in 2006, June 2006. So we're at eight years worth of divorce. Eight years worth of divorce. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the divorce was uh, e eventually settled, but uh, the um, court cases continue. Okay. There's, there's still court cases. On and on and on. On and on. Um, Let's see, so you were an hourly wage earner, so you, you had an income and, and everything was fine and you were in the home and you were paying the mortgage and paying all the bills, right? Correct. Okay, so all of a sudden it changed. What changed? In uh, July of 2007, um, there, were, there was a family court order where the uh, judge uh, issued an order uh, ejecting me from my own home and uh, his reason was that the, uh, not that there was any finding of any any problem in the home, but because of the escalating tensions in the home, mm -hmm. which made which there was no escalating e tension. Escalating tension. Yeah. So, and, and either way, so why would they throw out the father? Father. And that's just their yeah. instinct would be to throw out the father. You know, I'm sure there is tension. Listen, there's tension in everybody's home, yeah. but it hasn't been determined at that point who's got custody. Yeah. But by doing something like that, they start to set the ball in motion. Correct. Right. For you being the bad guy. And Correct. So that's something that we talk about all the time. Is you yeah. got to stay in the house. And fight to stay in the house because when you once can. you're out, yeah, you, you know, get back you'll in. never get back in, and it's a down. This correct. is gender. Down the down. gender biased nature of the law is that the man is always going to be in the bad yeah. position still to this day, and, and it's and, still going to be and the, the same. The, the fathers have no rights. Mm -hmm. um, you sort. You had went to counseling for a while. And yes, nothing uh, happened there, right? Well, the the um, prior to the divorce, um, my wife and I sought um, counseling. Uh, during those counseling sessions. Uh, it was suggested by the counselor that my wife continue privately with her counseling. Uh, she went a few times and quit, and she never went back. And uh, the, the counseling eventually ended. So when you didn't, when you weren't able to make money, and you weren't able to get through in counseling, and you were removed from your house, you already had three strikes against you at that point. Absolutely. So. So you weren't it because you weren't able to pay the bills. You immediately fell in, in arrears. I'm, I'm guessing. Well, what happened is um, the the judge in that case, in this case, he um, made an order, and the order was uh, very specific about what had to be paid. Uh, the problem with the order was that it uh, it 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 uh, commanded me to pay out more than what I earned, and not by a little bit. So whatever savings we had got eaten up immediately, and then it was impossible absolutely impossible to keep up with the order. Did you try to get a downward modification by any chance? Uh, no, my, my, uh, my lawyer at the time did not advise me that to that. That was a huge mistake, it's unfortunate, but this is why no matter what counsel you have, there is only a certain amount of predictability to the truth, tied to the truth that you can obtain. Yeah. And, oh. and when I was pro se, I, there were points that during this, uh, this uh, eight year ordeal where I was pro se, I made that argument to the judge a number of times and he ignored it. Um, did you, you, you traveled with a couple of different lawyers? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so what was the nature of those changes? Um, the first lawyer I had, um, basically what happened was uh, she looked at the case, she, she saw that uh, we had a, you know, a limited income, it was a one income family, I, I worked, um, my wife did not. Um, she saw that we owned a home and um, besides that we didn't have much in the way of assets. So she was uh, trying to get a a uh, settlement on the case. She felt it was something that could be settled very easily. Um, what happened was shortly after that, she advised me that she wanted to get off the case 
because she was being bombarded by my wife's attorney with, with, uh, with papers. With con it was a paper, she was engaging in a paper war with her that we just couldn't afford. Right. And she could see that this was going to be a long, drawn-out trial that we, there was no way we were going to be able to pay for, and she requested to get off the case. Mm. Yeah, Gary, didn't it, doesn't the smell of the consistent way of being dragged through the court that just to obtain money, that right. it doesn't make any difference what your life is like, no. what the health and safety of the right. kids have no bearing on this. Yeah. And it, it seems to me like going into it, if, and I don't know if you felt going into it, but it seems to me like you would go into this case and say, you know what? We really don't have any assets, like many people, especially on Long Island. We live paycheck to paycheck. Correct. Let's share the kids. Yeah. I'll, you, obviously, you have to give her a little bit of money because she wasn't working. Let her get a job, get back on her feet, and everybody moves on. I mean, is that when you were filing for divorce? From what I read in the papers, uh, you were the primary caregiver of the children. Correct. What did What did you think was going to happen when you filed for divorce? Because I would imagine if if somebody would say to you, "Hey, you filed for divorce." and you're gonna lose your children, you're gonna lose your money, you're gonna to go to jail, you would say, I'm not doing this. So Correct. what did you think was gonna happen going into this divorce? What did you envision the outcome was going to be when you filed? Um, I expect reasonableness. Um, and originally what had happened was uh, when my wife and I agreed that we were going to get a divorce, I had made her uh, uh, a generous offer um, to put her in a home, uh, <coughs> to get her her own home, a uh, new car, a. Um, uh, the only thing I wanted was uh, that we split custody, that, we had fi that I saw the children 50% of the time and she saw the children 50% of the time was the only thing that I asked for. I offered her a large sum of money and I offered her support that would far exceed the, what she would get in any court right. and she turned that down. Do you mm -hmm. think that was her or do you think that was lawyers uh, egging her on and, and to, to keep going and, and that, that turned her into an unreasonable it, person? It is my belief that her attorney completely turned her yeah, any 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 resemblance of reasonableness was. Did she have down any the drain. legal knowledge before <coughs> you got involved in that? So if she didn't, then you would probably be right with a higher percentile of. Which is why you say she, if you would have yeah. gone to a mediator, maybe she wouldn't have been exposed because lawyers. Yeah. Or th that's why I asked what you thought your outcome would be because I, many times people say, "Oh, I thought I'd get shared custody, and I, I thought it was 50-50, and my lawyer told me I have a good shot." And then when you run out of money, they say, "You know, we tried. This, <laughs> you know, it's very tough. Men are men are uh, they're biased against men, but they're the best salesmen. These attorneys because obviously if you don't file, they don't make money. Correct. So they're the best salespeople, and I think sometimes they're the ones. Who, who get the ball rolling with you know this adversarial relationship, and then she's mad at you, and you're fighting with each other, you know, through the attorneys. It's unfortunate, yeah. but I truly believe that that a large majority of the uh, attorneys that are out there, not all of them, but many of them, what they do is they um, uh, they 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 gain on their on this hatred, and they gain on this anger, and they, sure. that's that's how they that's sure. how they accelerate. That's how they make money. I'm going to read a quote from one of the things you wrote me. It's my my lawyer also said I had a stroke of bad luck. Should I mention the judge's name? Yeah, uh, yeah. he's gone now anyway okay. because of that. Oh, that's right. Okay, <laughs> well, there you go. This, uh, my lawyer also said I had a stroke of bad luck getting Blydenberg as a judge and Corton as opposing attorney, as the case would be impossible to settle. That's, uh, That's my a heck of a statement. I mean, think about it. My first attorney, that was my first attorney who said that at the very end. She said that um, it was a, just a stroke of bad luck to get both of those. She said it was bad enough to have one, you have both. So then <laughs> w what is anyone watching this show is going to look at you now and they're going to say, well, you know, there's, there's that one judge and I've got to make sure I avoid that judge. Well, of course, he's passed now, right? Well, actually, it's uh, Judge Blydenberg and it was well known in the court system in Suffolk County that first of all, Judge Blydenberg was anti-father, would do anything to break up the family. We don't know what Correct. reason, what led him to get to this stage, but more importantly, and the reason uh, that we believe that he ended up being removed was that when he had a relationship with the uh, attorney, that it didn't matter what you did, if he had the relationship with that attorney, you were just gonna be screwed. Like, and it was common knowledge, like your attorney told you, and she was right. If like the other attorney golf. was, was a friend with, with Judge Blydenberg, you were just dead in the water no matter what you did. Go back to the uh, false, there was some false <coughs> complaints that got you thrown out of the house, am I correct? Uh, it was what started the, the process to, to, to get me out. She had, my wife had, um, I, I believe under the advice of her attorney, had called the police on a number of occasions claiming that there was uh, things happening in, at the house. And every time the police came, n nothing was ever done. There was, no, there was never any findings. And uh, to the point where um, now understand that the children were witnessing all this too, which is what really bothered me. Right. All right. And of um, the uh, the at one point the, uh, the Suffolk County Police Sergeant had uh, advised my 
uh, wife that if she would continue to call and file false complaints with the police department, she may be subject to arrest. Did you, would your, your daughter's quote that said, I don't know why you are here, my, when the police had come, my mom and dad were not even fighting? Um, can I discuss that specific uh, incident? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. There was, um, uh, my wife and I um, at that time were living in the home together in separate bedrooms. Um, and we had kind of a, a, a shared, uh, I want to say we, we were being amicable to when mm -hmm. we were coexisting co and amicable about how, when we were with the children. Right, right. So what happened was we, uh, one particular day, uh, we had an argument. I was supposed to take my son out. She ended up taking him out. Um, I was at my parents' house. I was waiting for the children to return home. And uh, when they got home, they called me. They said, Dad, we're home. So I returned home. So just to spend time with my uh, children, I was in my, my bedroom with my children, okay? I was sitting on the floor uh, facing my children, playing with them, and uh, my, my wife came up behind me, and she picked up the phone, and she called the police, and with me sitting on the floor said, my husband is slamming my head in the door with my daughter sitting there and my son yeah. sitting there. And I said, and I, I yelled, I said, I'm, what are you talking about? I'm sitting down. <laughs> You know what are you talking about? And I was trying to get some voice on the on the on the phone, and to which the police arrived. They you came, think, think that she and then my that's when my daughter said yeah. to the police officer, she said, "I don't even know why you are here. My mommy and daddy weren't even fighting." So, do you think that there's any um, possibility that the uh, daughter would, if it was your daughter, primarily yes. she's older, yes. I'm taking it away, would would not have been affected by? seeing her mother lie in front of her and then right. have 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 you lose custody based on what you I mean it just doesn't make any sense of course I know <laughs> Both I'm looking for some glimmer of hope here <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, what message? It's not going to have the it's message. A horrible is message. Horrible. I mean, about, about lying, and it's okay to lie. It's okay to file a report. It's okay to to remove the father out of the house. I mean, it just sends so many yeah. horrible so many bad messages, messages yeah. to, to yeah. the child. And and I was I'm such a uh, such a terrible father that when my daughter said, "Mommy, I want to go with Daddy," if the, the, at that point the police had said, "If you want to leave the house for the night just to cool down, you you can do that." And I said, all right, I'll go stay with my father, you know, for the, mm -hmm. for the night. To which my daughter said, uh, Daddy, can I come with you? Mm. And, she, and she said, yeah, you know, she was like, go ahead. And my daughter came with me and stayed with me. Oh. That means a lot in the long run. It does. It, sure, it certainly does. I mean, it, you, the fact that you have to go through this and lose your resources, this is the system set up to do that. And it bothers me that they don't really care about kids at all. If they had any kind of idea of what they did, they would never incarcerate a man who's just a behind in child support and that's correct what had happened to get that's you that right. to that point by the way okay the um, the uh, to my incarceration was a result of a uh, of a contempt hearing right. okay a contempt hearing that was a criminal hearing which they're not supposed to be able to use the criminal uh, system in a civil case mm -hmm. they're not supposed to be allowed to do that um, it was a criminal hearing in which I was denied counsel okay my counsel had left and applied to leave, and they, even though I opposed it, they were granted uh, by Judge Blydenberg and to leave. And, um, and that was right before my contempt trial. Um, I'm not versed in law, I have no legal experience, and I went into a criminal trial on my own, mm. and obviously lost. The, uh, the, the contempt hearing was not based on child support, per se, okay, it was um, this this order that the, I had told you about earlier that the judge had written where I, I he ordered me to pay far in excess of than what I earned far in excess it was uh, something to the tune of forty thousand dollars a year more than what I earned he expected me to pay out right. now that's it, when I would have asked for the, I wouldn't have well you can you can you can sustain that for a few weeks or for a few months it'll eat up your savings or whatever you have but after a certain point you just can't do it anymore yeah, well, so every that, time yeah. I was a lot late of on a bill to yeah, so, yeah I would I they would they would file a contempt motion the tens of thousands of dollars in, in contempt motions so these all culminated to where there I believe there were seven or eight contempt motions and uh, they, they, they were impossible for me to, to, to fight. Instead of billable hours. I didn't, hours, I didn't stand a chance in the court. Motion, motion practice instead of billable hours is a way to add up the dollars, yeah. too. 
Yeah, I think it's something that they said, you know, to me, you were set up from the beginning with Blydenberg yeah. that he gives you the, first he gives you the order that you can't afford to right. say stay, and he knows you're going to show up in court when you can't pay it. And then on top of that, you don't have the money to pay it, and then they hit you with these motions, which if you don't come up with money, you're afraid, so then you, you borrow more money to pay the motions, and next thing you know, you're, you're deeper in debt, you can't afford an attorney, right. and you're going to jail, and, and that, in your case, you, six it, months it, it, in jail. And that's, it, the, that's not a good time either, because that's the bill still tallies up. You uh, you don't yeah the bill still tallies up. But while while I was in Which jail, makes no sense. I received a letter from my employer that I was fired from my job for not coming in. Yeah, and uh, so I lost. I have um, you lost the house. Yeah, and lo your job. Lost my house. Lost my job. And uh, top benefits. Um, my children were put on. Suffered. My children were put on the welfare system instead of yeah. uh, instead of having uh, having it's, top it's benefits through my it's insurance. Unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable. Kind of, especially they talk about the best interest of the child. Forget about certainly what's yeah. in the best interest of the government. Right. That now all the taxpayers paid to incarcerate you instead of having you. Work. What does that do to the to the children? The public should know there wasn't anything good that happened during this case. Nothing good for anyone Correct. except the system. Except right. for the attorneys uh, who who, well, who cashed in, it, I mean, it acquired it acquired uh, well, money made for money. those yeah. people within the system. It did not in any way go to the aid of the family that could have used some guidance Absolutely. and help. Um, um, and what something that uh, Gary brought up was in the best interest of the children. I'd like to point out that on the record that the judge had said. Um, uh, that at the end of my trial, he said, uh, and this is a quote, that he that he knew that this was not in the best interest of my children, but he was doing it anyway. And the law guardian wasn't even there. I requested that the law guardian be there to represent yeah. my children, uh, the, 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 my, my children's, you know. You're not going to get any help. And uh, the, law, the law guardian refused to, I, to I come in and help. One of the things that you, that you had mentioned uh, in your recap is once you got out of jail, First of all, your wife didn't take your kids to see you in jail. So Correct. now you have six months with no kids, and then you get out of jail, and now they want to do reunification therapy because you didn't see your children. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which, of course, you can't afford that because you have to pay for it. Correct. Because you just that's got that's out of jail. That's indoctrination, isn't it? You and, know? you know, they're setting you up again. Correct. Ay, ay, ay. Well, uh, let's go to the law guardian a little bit. And one, one part of what the law guardian had done, it created a place for... Um, this to happen is a quote as soon as I walked in I was attacked by my children my daughter screaming daddy 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 and jumped into my arms my son fought his way out of the stroller and followed this was when this and, was and a, how did this happen this is unbelievable this was one of the most heartbreaking times that I ever had with my children and this whole this whole scenario um, <clears throat> um, the law guardian uh, have, uh, and I, uh, the law guardian made an appointment with me. I was to bring in uh, these uh, these papers that she needed, and she wanted pictures. They were documents that she needed um, that I had. So um, I called her up, and I made an appointment with her. Her um, sister, who is the who was her secretary, made an appointment for I believe it was the following day. I think it was a Wednesday. She said come in at three o'clock. Um, at this time, my wife had and had still had an, uh, op an open order of protection yeah. against me, yeah. which meant you couldn't go. You were, you couldn't go near her. I couldn't go near her, but it wasn't against the children. But because she held the children, I couldn't see the kids. Right. right. Okay. So what happened is, on on a scheduled appointment, I went to the law guardian's office, and uh, I walked in the door, and the door closed behind me, and all I heard was "Daddy, Daddy, Daddy," and and my daughter jumped and screamed and ran to me and jumped into my arms and, I, and she was clinging to me on the side. With that, my son started kicking his way out of his, out of his stroller, ripped, out, ripped himself out of his stroller, came running to me, climbed on me. It's a good thing I didn't see that. I wouldn't <laughs> have been able to stand it. I, I, uh, I didn't know what to do, so I, I went to the first person that I saw and I said, excuse me, uh, it was another attorney that was in the office, and I said, I don't know what to do. My, my children are attached to me, literal, literally, and uh, um, my, the, my, my wife at the end of the hall has an order of protection against me. With that, she said, don't worry, it's okay. She put me in another room. Uh, she closed the door and she let me stay with my children and she said, just wait here until the law guardian arrives. When the law guardian arrived, she, had, she came in. Uh, she spoke with me. She was very happy. She spoke to the children. And um, you know, I said that I had to leave. Uh, I couldn't stay there. It was just an appointment to drop off papers. and. Um, she, um, she, she, she thanked me, and as, as I'm walking out the door, there's a, the, the, her office is surrounded by a glass partition, and the children are at the windows, banging on the windows, screaming, Daddy, don't go. My, my daughter was crying. My son was crying. Please stay. Please stay. Come back. Come back. Come back. 
Um, so I left, and uh, I went to work that night. And you I left under that, that must have been a hard I, leave. I, I, I can't even tell you what yeah, it felt like yeah. to me at that point. Um, so uh, that night my father called me at my job and, uh, and said to me that the police were uh, looking for me and uh, they had a, a warrant for my arrest. And I said, uh, for what? And they said, violating order of protection. So the next day I turned myself in and spent the night in jail. For a violation. And did you, in did the you law call, guardian's office. Did you call the law guardian and say, hey, you messed up. You need to go to court and explain that I didn't violate any order of protection. Even common sense would say, well, you didn't do anything to your wife. You, you, were, you were in a public place. Yes. And she wasn't, even if it was a mistake, nobody was put in any harm's way. But did you ask the law guardian to call the police and say, hey, you guys made a mistake here? You, you, we could straighten it right out. We made this, you know, an honest mistake. Absolutely. I spoke to the law guardian, and the law guardian's response to me in the, in the hallway of the Supreme Court was that she would have her sister lie to the, to the court and say that, sh that there was never any appointment for me, that, she did not have, that I did not have an appointment that day. Why would I be there if I didn't have an appointment? Mm. I was, had a scheduled appointment at 3 p.m. You know, the, the length and breadth of the amount of deceit that goes on in the system constantly amazes me. Every time I hear another story, and that, that is a, a tremendous amount of deceit all in one governmental package. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and as Chris and I know, you know, people yeah. looking at the show may say, yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It, it happens does. all the time. All the time. Law attorneys, they, they lie. That shouldn't come as a shock to anybody. Law guardians are attorneys. They, they lie, and they're going to protect themselves you know, uh, they, not, you're just a, a victim. You know, to them, you're you're just a grist for the mill. Your right. fodder. You know, your right. fodder, right? They, yeah. Exactly. They, they don't care about you, your kids. They want to get appointed more cases. And and I'd, I'd like to point out that at that time, or when you're going through this, especially all of the the good, decent fathers that are out there that are, that are doing their best and working as hard as they can, that when they when they go through this, a lot of times you think you're alone. And the bottom line is that there's 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 hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of men going through the same thing. Good, good, good fathers going Can through you, the same thing that we're Somebody going told me once that the jails are there to be filled, and, and yet we're the most, uh, we incarcerate more, more people. people. An than industrialized in, nation, I believe. An in, in industrialized nation. And, and, so and of course, you know, what, what possibly, I mean, if it's to punish right. you, they could say, hey, we put it, we're putting a GPS tracking, and you can only go to work, and you can only see your kids. You would have kept your job. Everybody would have had more money. Yeah, some people recommended know. that. Yeah. Instead, they put you in jail, and now you're, I mean, I don't know what it was like, but I'm assuming, and you could you know, tell us what it was like, because luckily I haven't been there except for one night. What was it like to be in jail? I mean, it, I it, you, it, have, you ever well. been in jail before? I, mean, I, have, I, I can tell, honestly tell you that I've, I've, I've never been in jail my entire life. I've never been in any kind of trouble my entire life. Uh, I'm just a, a, a hard, a, I go to work every day. And I uh, take care of my children, and uh, the, the children mean everything to me. Nothing, nothing means more to me than my but children. But what it was like in jail? Jail was just a horrible. I mean, was it a country experience. club? <laughs> you know, you hear all the time, oh, it, it's child support. Um, I don't it's think a country so. club. It, it, what, what's it like out it's, there? It's it's not at all. Um, jail jail is an absolute horrible experience. I, I don't wish that upon um, anybody that's in this in my situation. Uh, nobody should be there for um, for basically what amounts to a, a, a backdoor to a debtor's prison. That's yeah. what it is, and I thought that was done with. I thought we were done with all that. We were supposed to have been done with all that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I would say, uh, sure. I didn't belong there. I mean, yeah, well, I, I was, I was amongst it. people that were, were, were absolutely, had, I, I wanted nothing to do with. In the midst of competition, potential loss of your children is not a time to look at this. This is what I always felt. I wrote this down just as a reminder. You're under such tremendous pressure to begin with. People go to court thinking that they did something wrong because that's what the... Um, perception is the perception Correct. is if you go to court, what? What do you go to court for? Except you've done something mm -hmm. wrong. So, if you're innocent, why would you have any reason to be upset about it? So, when you surprise attack like this, and every man is surprised attack like this to thousands of degrees, um, so many men have, are incarcerated needlessly, like, needlessly. like yourself. Absolutely. There's no question about it. It's taxpayer dollars putting this a guy like this as a good father in jail, and yet the prisons need to be filled. And then we jail more people than we need to. And then the president goes ahead and pardons low uh, criminal, criminally affected drug dealers. There's an awful lot of misinformation going on here that stops us from thinking clearly. I, I, I'd like to point out one more thing. When, when, I, when I was first incarcerated, um, my parents had hired an attorney to try to get me uh, out of jail. They wanted to file an appeal on that order. Um, 
the that that attorney went to the court and in order to file the appeal he was re, he was required to have uh, certain paperwork and so he went to the court and requested the uh, commitment order mm -hmm. uh, which was a which was a critical piece of information he had to have in order to file the appeal um, when he went to the court the court denied him that paperwork they told him no we don't have it we can you know we can't help you too bad mm. um, so he was unable to file an appeal um, when I was released I went to the court myself and I asked them for that commitment order uh, and they said well what do you need it for you've already done your time I said I want my I would like the, the commitment order I want I want Good. it and um, the the law secretary went in the back came back out in five minutes and handed it to me so they had it the whole time and yeah. they refused to give it to my attorney who was willing to file an appeal and while I was there there was another gentleman in a, in a case on, in Suffolk County where um, he did have an appeal and he won that appeal on the mm. same, on the, it was a very similar situation to mine. They tried to put him in prison. Do me a favor, get me that information because that's something I can use to pass along to others. See the outrage here. We, there, there are ways at, at times that we find because we're supposed to know everything in court. Like you're supposed to know how that process works, right? right? right. I, I nobody don't ever know. knows it. I don't know that. I've been <laughs> doing this for like how many years? I don't know. I'm doing it for like 20 years or so, 25 years. I still don't know the whole entire process in there because a lot of it is secret and underhand and who knows who and pass it along, et cetera, et cetera. Um, thank you very much for spending the time with us here, Barney. And I hope that everything does work out. Only ill will can be created within the entire family when one parent is unjustly or too harshly imprisoned. That's gonna, it has legs and it's gonna go everywhere. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you very you. much, Gary Jacobs. Thank, thank you. Societal and political trends are rapidly breaking down the family that once was the cornerstone of our great American culture. At FIT, we know you cannot get this information on your own, so we'll bring it to your TV every week so you get used to hearing this because this is the truth. My name is Chris DiMaggio. Thank you for watching FIT TV, and we'll see you again next week.